It is my pleasure to welcome all of you here this evening. My name is Ken Mosesi, and I'm the Executive Director of the American Fertility Association. And we are thrilled to be back in Miami Beach. I was here about 10, 11 days ago for Pride and had an amazing time. And we love the community here. and We're growing to love it more and more every day. Uh, and anything that we can do to help all of you on your path to parenthood, we want to do. So a little bit about the American Fertility Association. We're a national nonprofit organization that began about a dozen years ago primarily to help women who are struggling with infertility. And over the years, our mission has expanded. And it's expanded uh, to be a, an inclusive family building organization uh, whose mission is to help all hopeful parents find their unique path to parenthood. Uh, we adopted in 2008 uh, an official strategic goal of family building for the LGBT community. Uh, attorney uh, Elizabeth Schwartz is here. She is a specialist in reproductive law and uh, was here last year as well. We're thrilled to have her back. Uh, Liz is a professional member of the American Fertility Association. So um, lest you think I've been like texting this whole time, A, I have no service in here, and B, I've just been taking notes. What's nice about like getting to go last, especially for lawyers, I get sort of like rebuttal opportunity. So, um, <laughs> so uh, real quick, my name is Elizabeth Schwartz. I'm an attorney uh, here in Miami Beach. I uh, focus my practice on, um, exactly, thank you. She just saw my tiles over there. Very nice display. The blue one over there, Elizabeth. There you go. Thank you for the, thank you, Vanna White. <laughs> um, and uh, so I've been uh, practicing uh, LGBT family law for all my years of practice, which is about 17 years now. Uh, and what that means is, I, how rude. Excuse me, officer. Um, so as I say, I make and break gay families. So I do family formation, adoption, insemination, surrogacy, and some divorce, because that happens, uh, and lots of estate planning. Um, that's something that we still uh, very much need to worry about here in the state of Florida. Now, I talk really fast, too, so feel free to tell me to slow down. I've got. I think of every of all the like list of issues that everybody had to cover today, I had like the most, and plus I've added more. So um, I'm going to try to talk really fast and cover a lot, but feel free to like holla if I'm talking too fast. Um, okay, so uh, first of all, um, a couple of quick thank yous. The LGBT Visitor Center, if you guys have never been here before, is a real treasure of our community. Um, all the furniture that you're sitting on, all this here was donated by IKEA. All the electronics around you is donated by Best Buy. Um, there's a fantastic conference room in there uh, that is for community use. And so this is a, a real fantastic hub of the community and they and it's fantastic for us to, to have for them to host us uh, for a second year in a row. Uh, the AFA is an incredible resource. They are, they're, they're very, very dedicated to working with LGBT families. And as Ken said, not just sort of recently since the Gaby boom, they have been at it uh, and, and before this was anything that's trendy. And if you go on their website, they have some really amazing resources. Uh, and, and it's not just an afterthought, and it's not just sort of marketing. Uh, this is something that they that they really are committed to as evidenced by the fact that they're feeding you all tonight and there's still food in there. Um, <laughs> California Cryobank, you guys, is just, they're the gold standard of spermies. They really are. They always have been, and I think that they always will be. The, the you know, I, I get to see a lot of your profile because I'll tell you that couples will come to my office and like I'm their lawyer you know I've done their estate work I'm helping them with their parenting stuff and so for some reason I am often the tiebreaker so they'll come and they'll 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 plunk down a couple of profiles and they'll be like do we go with the soccer star or the physicist and they're like we can't decide and they want I'm also a mediator so they want me to they want me to help them decide and so I, I really get to see um, how thorough these profiles are, uh, which which also leads to me feeling feeling really very passionately about about using uh, a, an anonymous donor or an open donor and not using a known donor because one of the things that people very often say is, well, we you know we ha I have this best friend I've known him for my whole life and I want to right she's like mm, but I know him and I know everything about him I know everything about him I promise you you do not know all the things that California Cryobank knows about their donors it's it's I, I love the way you just put it Scott that because I always say it's stuff that you would never think to ask but you're really saying like beyond that it's stuff that they wouldn't they wouldn't 
know about themselves. They wouldn't think to articulate about themselves. So it could really be somebody that you know from back in the day and, and you don't know this much about them and they're not vetted and tested uh, in the same way. Um, Dr. Ackerman has uh, three offices, uh, one right here in Miami Beach, one in Miramar, and one down by Baptist. And, um, and they also, let me say that, you know, Ken wasn't kidding when he said that for, for a lot of years, and certainly still in a lot of parts of the country and even still down here in South Florida, which we like to think is sort of a progressive bubble in the South, um, there are lots of uh, REs, reproductive endocrinologists, lots of fertility doctors that will not work with same-sex couples. And Dr. Ackerman's office works not only with lesbian couples, but by the way, with gay male couples. So if you have gay guy friends who are thinking of doing surrogacy, that's that's uh, that's can be for some fertility doctors a heavier lift. And so that's something that, that that his office does and does really, really well and, and in three great locations. Um, so I, I wanna kind of briefly give you a lay of the land, uh, kind of where we are in the law in the state of Florida, because again, lots of misinformation out there. Um, and so I, I wanna talk about a couple of things. Um, number one, I just wanna briefly touch on, I wanna briefly touch on marriage, <laughs> just real quick. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, because there is so much misinformation. So, super quick. Uh, June 26, 2013, a fantastic Windsor decision came down from the U.S. Supreme Court. It repealed uh, the core of the Defense of Marriage Act, DOMA, or I think of it as the Denial of Marriage Act. So, DOMA went down, which was the federal ban against marriage equality, but what it left in place was the state bans that, that exist. Uh, Florida has a ban against same-sex marriage, not only in our statutes, but as if that was not enough. In 2008, uh, it was added into our uh, constitution, our state constitution as well. Um, so, so we still, there are 33 states uh, that have bans against uh, marriage equality. Florida is one of them. Um, all but four of those states realized Real, have realized by now that we've got a lot of work to do and we want to try to do that work in the courts. So we are trying to take down our statewide marriage ban in our courts. I'm fortunate enough to be on the legal team uh, for the Florida uh, marriage ban challenge. I'm working with a fantastic organization, the National Center for Lesbian Rights. They are, they've been around since 1977. Uh, they're based in San Francisco and DC, and they do uh, litigation and uh, legislative advocacy work, policy advocacy. And so uh, we brought a case here in January in state court, did a press conference right here. Um, and, uh, and that case is proceeding along. Uh, and, and so I'm, I'm happy to talk more about that. But the, but the punchline is um, we still got a long way to go. Uh, uh, there are nine cases that are, that are being reviewed uh, at the appellate level. So there's still some work to do. But I think we're going to end up with marriage, uh, knock on wood, uh, in Florida probably within the next three to five years. So what that means for you now <laughs> all of you who are starting families and considering it. Um, first of all, uh, lots of the big, while we may have a lot of federal rights associated with marriage, so if you guys went and got married elsewhere, and I'm happy to discuss with you what better or worse jurisdictions are, and there are better and worse jurisdictions. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, but, but if you are already married, of course, you know you have to file your taxes jointly. Um, some people say get to file taxes jointly, but I did my taxes this year. It's not cute, this marriage thing. I highly suggest you talk to a CPA before getting married. Um, <laughs> so, um, I did, I weighed the risks and it worked out. But anyway, so the punchline is that um, there, are, uh, there are lots of benefits that you get if you are married in another jurisdiction. There are some federal benefits that you get. You get no state benefits as yet because Florida would not recognize your marriage. So some of the biggies that are governed by the state, some of the big rights that are governed by the states are inheritance, hospital visitation, um, divorce. So there are lots of reasons why you still need to have your health care surrogate and will and all that stuff in place, because even if you're married elsewhere, that's not going to help here. So uh, that's critical. Another thing that's governed by the states um, is adoption. So uh, if you, let's say, have a baby and you go give birth in another jurisdiction um, and you want to come back to Florida, it's still really critical that you do a second parent adoption. 
and we're able to do those and they're going really, really well. I've done hundreds of them. Um, and what that means, what a second parent adoption is, is um, if you give birth and you want your partner to have legal rights to the child, then, sh then she will do a, a second parent adoption. Now, notice I didn't say a step parent adoption because unfortunately, a lot of very well-meaning judges and lawyers in Florida are doing these cases as step parent adoptions. And let me just say and make sure everybody sees me in all corners of the room you cannot do a step parent adoption in the state of Florida for a same sex couple and this is really critical we have a case right now that was done uh, improperly uh, and it's on appeal and our fingers are crossed that it's gonna come out okay but in a nutshell lesbian couple um, I'm sorry, we, I have a lot of acronyms, and one of them is EBM, Evil Bio Mom. So Evil Bio Mom, this, and these are broadly cases that are LBBs, lesbians behaving badly. So this is an LBB case, an LBB case with an EBM, Stay with me, uh, and and the and so the so the EBM you know changes her mind even after after they did the step parent adoption because they were married in D.C. and the judge in another part of the state said oh of course step parent adoption you know absolutely like let's let the non bio mom adopt the kid so then they break up. EBM goes crazy and says oh by the way um, that adoption was invalid. And guess what? The trial court agreed, and it's on appeal right now. So it's really important to get these done right. I, it doesn't have to be by me, but let me make sure that you are in the right hands because there's not a lot of lawyers that know how to do this thing. Um, the adoption uh, ban, you may know, we had an adoption ban in Florida since 1977, coincidentally the same year that our statutory ban against marriage was enacted, Anita Bryant, maybe not a name that many of you know, but boo hiss if you did, because she swept through Florida and, and, and sort of was the beginning of the radical right, and uh, really nationally, and uh, was responsible for our bans against uh, marriage, equality, and adoption. Uh, marriage, as you know, we're still working on adoption. Uh, we won in 2010. And so uh, it is now legal for gay people to adopt in Florida, um, which means that we are able to do the second parent adoptions as well. And I'm super duper proud to say, uh, because I worked really, really hard on this, that uh, our birth certificates will now be issued after you do the second parent adoption in the name of parent one, parent two, which is, by the way, more progressive than California, which will say, Mother, parent one, father, parent two. So that's like the only thing I get to gloat about with respect to how like that we're cooler than Florida. Okay. <laughs> so super proud about that. Um, and, and by the way, uh, so, so just a note about birth certificates. So when you give birth, uh, you will not name your donor, uh, hopefully because it's an anonymous donor. But, and I'll talk a little bit about using a known donor very parenthetically because my hope is none of you will do it because it is so terribly messy from a legal perspective. Um, but you will, but even if you do use a known donor or whatever, or you got knocked up with some dude and just for the fun of it. No, no, this is, I, this is, this is really real. I, I know, seriously, right? You know this. This is like a phenomenon that we and the LGBT legal movement are like talking about in our conferences. Like, okay, like lesbians are just going and like getting knocked up and, because it's like the easier thing to do and it's the cheaper thing to do. And it's like just super problematic for a lot of reasons. Um, <laughs> uh, but regardless, you will on the birth certificate only put yourself, don't try to do anything cute. Like even if your partner's name is like Pat, or Chris and put her on it as the father, that is fraud and you don't need to do fraud because we can do second parent adoption and we can do the second parent adoption right after birth and so the new birth certificate will get issued in the name of parent one, parent two and it's not like it says like amended birth certificate or like birth certificate 2.0. It looks just like the original birth certificate. So, so, so don't try to do anything funny. Um, okay, really quick about known donors. Oh my God, I have so many nightmares about this. And of course, people don't call the lawyer to say like, here's how awesome my known donor situation is going. So I always feel compelled to say that, I'm, that I probably present the more negative Nelly side of working with a known, with a, with a known donor. But, but it is for all of the reasons that have been referenced in terms of testing, in terms of all of the complications, I could talk until late into the evening uh, and share some, some real horror stories. Um, and so I will just say that the reason not to do it 
is it has it is more than, I mean I don't want to say more than anything because there are lots of good reasons not to but it can create so much of a complication in your life in the future from a legal perspective from an emotional perspective from a psychological perspective you too as moms are good enough you don't you don't need the kid doesn't need a daddy it's really fine for the kid to have two mommies there is no void you are plenty now um if you have that like best friend from back in the day that you really that's like oh but you know it's so important i really want my best friend to be involved in the kid's life guess what if your best friend is really your best friend he's going to be involved in your kid's life if even if the kid is not biologically related to him um i will by the way p.s say because we're talking about some psychological issues i've also for the last couple of years put on a panel um uh, of therapists who work with LGBT parents, and it's coming up at St. Stephen's Church, it's free, and it's May 3rd, it's a Saturday. Um, if you want, I can email you the flyer. Um, it's, if, you're, if any of you are on the group South Florida Family Pride, which you should be, it's a great local group that does organizing for LGBT families, and don't feel creepy if you don't have a kid yet. A lot of people come, a lot of people come, they're like, people think I'm like stocky and weird, but a lot of people get involved, it's called South Florida Family Pride, I think their website is SouthFloridaFamilyPride.org. You can also like them on Facebook. And I posted this um, thing about this parenting panel that we've done uh, for the last couple of years, and it's three years, and it's really interesting. And it's just it's just therapists, and it's it's mostly because my you know my friends Susan and Yeri who are criminal defense lawyers and moms and this is a whole huge part of my life and my practice we talk about all these psychological issues that come up like this void in fact we call it why don't I have a mommy and a daddy you know because that's what what the question is that sometimes will, will come up so that's Saturday May 3rd and that's at St. Stephen's Episcopal in Coconut Grove and it is free um, so so back to the legal stuff from the psychological stuff um, if you should decide that is just absolutely imperative to use this known donor. For God's sakes, have a written agreement. Oh my God, have a written agreement. <laughs> there is so much case law about, and by the way, this gets to why you need to use a, a fertility doctor too, um, is, is that there is a lot of case law on this in the state of Florida. And, um, and basically, the, the question is sort of, is he a donor or a father? That's what comes up. Whether it's moms go, trying to go after the guy for child support, usually it's the other way, it's the dad trying to establish paternity. So there are factors that the court looks at to determine whether this guy is a donor or a father. One of the factors is, was this done the old fashioned way? Was it done naturally or was it done in a clinical setting? So give yourself that advantage and do it in a clinical setting. Suck it up, save the money, and just wait till you can do it and then do it. And then number two, was there an agreement? Was there a written, clear agreement? And again, I could go on and on all night about cases where, where uh, couples have been careless about this. Um, you know, put him on the birth certificate. <laughs> Or whatever, or you know, or get, or or spent, you know, family day every Sunday, and then all of a sudden he was like, "Wait a minute, I've got parental rights." So, path of least resistance. Please just use an anonymous donor. It's much less messy, I promise. Um, and um, so, okay, uh, right. So uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about like what you can do before birth. Uh, and then what you do after birth from a legal perspective. So um, what's nice about these uh, second parent adoptions is that you can get started with them. Um, really, I always tell people to get started with them like once you're past your first trimester. You know, so you're, you look good to go, sister. Okay. <laughs> we got a preggers up front in case you didn't see. Um, uh, and so, uh, so, so you can start with the home study. You need a home study. And the reason we have to do a home study, I know it's like a little weird um, because it's like you're getting all these like background checks and fingerprints and such to, to adopt a child that like, you know, you're raising from the get go. Um, but it's just a peculiarity of the law of the state of Florida, and this is the case in many other states as well, uh, where you do have to, uh, uh, in order to, to, 
So in order to in order for you to allow your partner to adopt a child, this child, so your partner is adopting a child that's not legally related to her by blood or marriage. So it's 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 like an adoption, like any other adoption. So you got to do the home study. They tend to run between eight hundred and maybe fifteen hundred dollars. And you can and the reason I tell you to start early is because like you're probably with all the pregnancy stuff and everything hemorrhaging money. Well, that's probably a poor choice of words. Uh, <laughs> spending a lot of money, and, and, and it's nice to be able to stagger it, I think, a little bit. So you start with the home study when you're at past your first trimester. It takes about four weeks. Um, and you can also start uh, with me with the second parent adoption um, in advance, uh, and we can get all of the documents done. I charge $2,500 for a second parent adoption. It's really, it's. I know I should raise my rates, and everybody tells me I should. I know. Thank you. But I, my feeling is like um i guess from because i'm really whenever whenever people introduce me they always say attorney and activist elizabeth schwartz because i i come at this very much from an activistic perspective and i i think there's like a kind a little bit of like a lack of dignity and even having to do this it's like you guys are having this kid together and it kind of sucks so like i that not the kid part sucks the uh although that's that's a that's a debate but but no but i mean having to sort of go through this home study and and you know go to court and everything i i can appreciate for a lot of people it's like why do i have to go through this you know, we should just have equal parental rights. Um, but of course, that's not the case. And even, even if you did have parental rights, I mean, even if we got marriage in Florida tomorrow, which if I win my case, we will. Um, but even if we won tomorrow, the problem is, is that you still have a portability problem. By which I mean, if you, if you gave birth in Florida and you were a legally married couple, or even in many states you don't have to be married, you can say, put her on the birth certificate, that's what I tell you to do, and they will do it. The problem is, you then go on a road trip and you cross state lines, and let's, and let's say, God forbid, something happens to you. A birth certificate is, as we say in the law, presumptive, not conclusive evidence of parentage. So what that means is that there's a presumption that the other parent, the non-biological parent, is the, is the legal parent, but it's not conclusive proof. You need a judgment, because an adoption judgment is what you can take to another court and you can get full faith and credit, it's called, so that the, the court will recognize that judgment no matter where you go. So it is important you do these, but I guess I just never want anybody to not do it for for because it's too expensive. So I try to keep the fees low for that reason. Is, is um, there still yes. tax credit for second There half? is, thank you, I have that down below here. Yes, that was, yes, exactly, there is. Um, there is an adoption tax credit, so you do get every penny of that back unless you're married. So, I know, <laughs> I know, and so, thank you. So really quick, um, so because the federal government recognizes your marriage, if you try, if you do a second parent adoption and you are already a married couple, stay tuned, because if you're not already married, there's an answer here, there's a little workaround. Um, but if you want to get married this year, there's a workaround, okay. I mean, or in the year that you do your second parent adoption. So because the federal government rec recognizes your marriage, the, because, because the IRS recognizes your marriage, regardless of where you live, if you try to get your adoption tax credit and you are already a married couple, they will say, nope, that's like a step-parent adoption and you don't get your credit. So if you are not already married and you're gonna have a kid, do the cost-benefit analysis, see the tax man, whatever, see, but, but typically it's wiser, it's a big, big chunk of cash, um, that adoption tax credit. And so you will get, and it's a dollar for dollar, you get every penny back that you spent on anything having to do with the adoption, which by the way, I include, I mean, I know that my clients, accountants, because I don't give tax advice, they include the estate planning documents as well. Because one of the things I was going to say that you should do before birth is also make sure you have your estate plan in place. And I know you're thinking like, I don't have an estate. What do you mean estate? And estate literally is all of your stuff. I mean, it's anything. So if you die tomorrow, your parents can come in and take you know, you're, and I, I had this happen. I had a couple, they, they were together 23 years and they thought, oh, they didn't have anything, whatever. And these two guys and the parents came in and they, one of them passed away and they said, oh, he never would have been gay if it wasn't for you. Like for 23 years, it was a gun to his head. And they took like, they took like every screwdriver. They took his porn collection 
creepy. Um, and 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 they took every all of his personal property, everything, 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 and and denied uh, my client the right to bury his partner. And so, of course, more perhaps more importantly, um, from the perspective of about to be having a baby, you want to make sure that you have a healthcare surrogate in place. So that is what would allow your partner to care for you in the hospital if you are not able to communicate those wishes for yourself. I also do uh, documents regarding a child designation of pre-need guardian for minor child, power of attorney for minor child. So those are documents that you wouldn't need once the second parent adoption is done. Those are documents that give rights to the non-biological mom. But of course, there'll be this little period of time both in the hospital, well, during pregnancy in the hospital, and then before we're able to finalize the adoption. So you do want to have those documents in place. Um, and you do get adoption tax credit. Oh, this is what I was going to say. Um, but what's interesting is that um, if you are, let's say, giving birth in June, and you do your second parent adoption at the end of June, and you want to go get married in August, strangely enough, you can still get the adoption tax credit. And, and it's a weird thing because those of you who know anything about tax, marriage, if you, whatever, for all other tax purposes, whenever you get married, it's considered that you're married for that whole year. And I think that the government's just trying to work with us on this particular one. So if, if, if this is an issue for you, we could talk about it more, but that's a little workaround tax-wise. Um, okay, uh, co-maternity. Uh, so co-maternity is the, is the word that we use to describe this case, these cases that, that uh, Dr. Ackerman was talking about with the, with the egg sharing. You said egg donor. We say egg sharing, because here's why. The horrible, T well, the good TMH case. We just got this fantastic case down from the Florida Supreme Court, which was the first case that we have seen in the state of Florida that said that two same-sex people can be legal parents of a child. Here's what happened. Um, I don't want to say their names. Okay, so um, a lesbian couple decides to have a kid together. One gives her eggs, the other um, gives birth. The one who gives birth is the person on the birth certificate. This was several years ago before second parent adoption was a legal option. So the gestational mother, the one who gave birth, who's not biologically related to the child, is the one on the birth certificate. Um, they raise the child together for, a year, for four years. What happens? They break up. Now here I can't say evil bio mom because she's actually the evil gestational mom. So she's just a lesbian behaving badly. So LBB absconds with the child to Australia. We track her down. It was a horrible situation. We track her down, litigate the case. The, the, the punchline is... Um, she, the, the genetic mom ended up with parental rights. But guess what happened in the middle? The um, fertility doctor, not Dr. Ackerman's office, this is up in Melbourne, um, the fertility doctor, when they were going through this process, said to the genetic mom, oh, by the way, just sign here this egg donor agreement. What's an egg donor agreement? I do a lot of surrogacy. I do a lot of egg donors. Egg donors are typically people who are giving their child their genetic material, and the child will not have any relationship to them at all. They are donating their genetic material to a third party, and it's, they're not tending on parenting. That's not what was happening here, right? These were two women who were trying to both have, you know, a, a, what they felt was, a, was an important connection. I'm a big believer that genetics don't, doesn't create love. Love makes a family. But th for them, that was something that was really important. And so they just signed what the doc put in front of them. And so fast forward to the breakup, and the lesbian behaving badly, genetic, uh, it, a gestational mom says, oh, well, she may be genetic mom, but she signed this egg donor agreement. So, it, so uh, you know, I don't know if they just, what their thought process was in that moment. You know, oh, we don't know a lawyer who will do egg sharing, whatever. I do a lot of these. It's a really simple, super affordable, easy agreement to do. It's about the same, you know, concept as a sperm donor agreement in terms of, like, how much time it takes. It's a couple hours. It's not a big deal. So get it in place. It's not some $5,000, you know, investment. So if you're going to do something like that, really, whatever you do, don't just sign something. Read it. 
<laughs> you know, lesson number one, just read the thing, because that ended up being a tremendous issue in the case. Fortunately, the Florida Supreme Court looked to intention um, and didn't, didn't require them uh, to, did, it, the Florida Supreme Court looked to intention and didn't, and, and felt that the language in this agreement was not intended to apply to this particular couple. Okay, we have 30 minutes left, so I want to leave ample time for questions. Um, I think I covered everything that I wanted to cover. Marriage, adoption. So you know that adoption is legal now. So if this fertility path doesn't work for you, um, you can adopt a child that's unrelated to you. It does, you know, I know I've talked mostly about second parent adoption because, God willing, all your fertility dreams will come true. Um, but if you want to also add to your family, family uh, uh, through adoption. Uh, it is absolutely legal in the state of Florida and, and there are no uh, impediments uh, to it. There's a, there's a little bit of a, of a workaround that we do with regard to joint adoption, which I can talk about if you want to hear about it. It's we do sequential adoption instead because of the little quirk in Florida law. Um, but, uh, but anyway, I'm happy to answer any questions and thank you all for your attention. Thank you to each and every one of you for coming out tonight. We really appreciate you being here because it makes our jobs joyful and worthwhile. Um, this is really our passion and having you all here tonight um, is a great treat. We wish you all the best success in your endeavors and please join me in giving a round of applause to Dr. Ackerman and Liz and Scott.